in this video we will discuss about vectors designed for genetic engineering in the first video we discussed about plasmids used as cloning vectors for genetic engineering genetic engineering is when we combine two dna's this is called as genetic engineering and here in this video we'll discuss about other vectors like bacteriophage vectors cosmid vectors plasmids phasmids shuttle vectors yeast artificial chromosomes yaks plasmids we have already discussed so we'll start one by one first we'll discuss about bacteriophage vectors now bacteriophage vectors are the vectors which parasitize bacteria they are called as bacteriophages how they parasitize now this is the viral particle which is parasitizing bacteria this is bacterium and this is the viral particle this part of the viral particle is called as head and this is made up of protein called as protein coat and this is the dna of the virus this is called as tail and these are the fibers by which it is attaching to the bacterial wall now this will dissolve the bacterial wall with the help of enzyme lysozymes and we can see here there is break in the bacterial cell wall and this dna of the virus will come into the bacterial dna and this is the bacterial dna and this is the viral dna now this viral dna will take control of the bacterial dna bacterial dna forming itself for the bacteria this will start forming for the viral particle so this will be doing transcription translation and then when many copies of dna have been produced proteins have been produced so there is assemblage of the viral particle inside the bacterial wall and we can see here lot of viral particles have been produced now when lot of viral particles have been produced and multiplied they will break the bacterial wall and they will get released like here we can see they are breaking the wall and they are getting released and this is called as lytic pathway so one viral particle we have got many viral particle this is called as reproduction of the viruses or multiplication of the viruses now this principle have been taken into consideration by the recombinant dna biotechnologist or genetic engineers what they have done they have combined this viral dna with the foreign dna what is foreign dna dna which we want to recombine with other dna this is called as foreign dna or our D dna of insert or dna of interest now this can be cut with the help of restriction enzyme and then this dna can get inserted into this viral dna we can take out the viral dna and we can again cut it and we can insert our gene of interest like we can he see here uh, blue gene have been interested blue i have just shown to differentiate that this is the foreign dna which have been put it into put it into the viral dna we can see here this is the foreign d gene or foreign dna now when uh, we can see here when viral particle have multiplied this blue gene has also been multiplied so here also we can see when they will release they will carry this foreign dna or gene of interest or we can see these are transformed viruses and when they will further uh, infect a bacterium this gene can get transferred into that so we can use bacteriophages as vectors uh, what is the advantage of bacteriophages using as vector as compared to plasmids because here we can use large dna fragments second it is very easy to detect during cloning experiment like uh, for detection of the plasmid with transformed cell it is somewhat difficult but with viral particles we can detect transformed cells very easily so these are two advantages of using uh, bacteriophages as vectors so most commonly used bacteriophage vectors they are lambda phages and phage m13 particle lambda phages are also represented by this sign and this is second uh, phage particle which is called as phage m13 vectors so again we'll discuss one by one first we'll discuss lambda phage vectors now lambda phage vectors they have double standard dna now this is double standard dna like we discussed this is head and this part is tail this is made up of 48 502 base pairs 
and this will have a origin of replication mean point from where its replication start this is called as origin of replication we have discussed in detail in the uh, video of plasmids what are the requirements for the vectors they should have ori point or origin of replication point then it must have genes for head and tail protein because when viral multi multiply head and tail is produced so this must have genes for head and tail protein plus enzymes for dna replication and it also has cohesive end. What are cohesive end? We'll discuss in the next slide just now, which is made up of 12 base pairs, also called as cos sites. This is very, very important, cos sites. So large portion of the viral genome, which is not essential, that can be removed, right? Lytic infection of Echerichia coli cells mean when these viral particles, they infect the Echerichia coli, like we discussed in the previous slide. So this is called as lytic infection right now part of the dna which is not essential for the lytic infection which is not which is not having the genes for head and tail protein mean which are not essential that can be removed like we can see here this is the viral dna and these are the cos sites or the cohesive end made up of 12 base pairs g g g c g g c g a c c t now here no basis pair are there here no base pair are there so this these sites which are cos sites or cohesive site because here we can add bases opposite to t we can add a opposite to c we can add g opposite to c we can add g so these are the sites which are naked and we can add the bases so these are cohesive sites or cos sites now this is the viral dna now part of the dna which is not essential that can be cut after cutting we can insert the foreign dna over here like we can see here now when this uh, this cohesive site dna enters into the bacteria this will become circularized like this right when this becomes circular dna so we can see here the portion of the genome which is not essential that can be replaced with the foreign dna like we can see here this is the foreign dna which we have inserted into this vector and when this will go into the bacteria this will multiply like we have discussed in the previous slide and this foreign dna will be uh, converted into millions of copies or many copies depending upon how much viral particle have been produced and this part is called as cos site by this this will become cohesive in nature like this will become circular in nature so this is called as cos site second vector is Farch m13 vector this is filamentous vector we can see here this is the filamentous vector this can again like infect the bacteria so we can use this as Farch vector this has single standard DNA. I mean, this has single standard DNA, not double standard DNA. So it can also infect E. coli, like supposing this is E. coli bacterium and this is the viral particle which is infecting it, right? So this E. coli will have pili or we can say F vectors which have sex pili. This is made up of protein pilin, right? So this can infect this E. coli bacterium. Now foreign DNA, <coughs> like this has single standard dna we have said so we can like supposing we have this a uh, single standard dna right so we can cut a part of the dna over here we can insert the foreign dna over here like this has been inserted because this is single standard okay now, now when this single standard dna is present inside the bacterium supposing this is bacterium and this single standard dna present inside the bacterium like this this will become circular in nature this will become circular right now when this becomes circular now this will undergo replication right replication many dna copies will be produced supposing 100 copies have been produced right now this will also turn into double standard like we are here we have seen this is single standard first this will turn into double standard like this About when 100 copies of this have been produced like when many copies have been produced like this many copies have been produced when 100 copies have been produced now this will become single stranded now DNA will become single stranded like this this will again carry this foreign DNA now this becomes single standard and this will come out of the cell as m13 particles now supposing this is the bacteria 
and this is the we can say single standard copies which have been produced now right so this single standard copies will be converted into m13 viral particles like we discussed in the previous slide how viruses they multiply inside the bacteria first this will be double standard then this will become single standard when 100 copies have been produced and we should not forget this is carrying the foreign dna right so when this is getting converted into single standard so this will come out of the viral uh, this will come after the bacterial cell as viral particle as m13 particles so we will get single standard gene clones now this single standard gene clones which have only one sequence they can be used for the dna sequencing so we can use m30 as cloning vectors we can also use bacteriophage lambda phage part vectors lambda phage vectors phage m13 vectors for cloning of the gene for multiplication of the gene i think it's clear to you another vector is cos mid vector as the name indicate this is the combination of cos plus mid cos is cohesive end like we discussed in earlier this part is called as cohesive end this is the cohesive cohesive end or cos site right so we are combining cos site from the viral particles or from the phages and mid from the plasmid here we are using the plasmids part of the plasmids like plasmid can be uh, so i'll exp just i'll explain to you then i'll say plasmid plus cos site this become cos mean cohesive end mid mean part of the plasmid so this is called as cos mid vectors so we have this part of the gene which is from the plasmid now this is carrying a, a marker gene also ampicillin resistant gene ampicillin is an antibiotic uh, so this can also grow in presence of ampicillin now this gene also has sites for the restriction enzyme right so i have named the restriction enzyme like this is pvu1 uh, this has been uh, designed or discovered from proteus vulgaris this is bacteria proteus vulgaris p is for proteus vu is for vulgaris one I mean this is the one enzyme which have been discovered from this bacteria now this is pst1 providentia sturati right this is again a name of the restriction enzyme so this is the part of the plasmid which is carrying these two restriction enzyme then here this is another gene which is resistant to the tetracycline this is again a marker gene because this cosmid will also able to grow in presence of tetracycline again this is having two sites for the restriction enzyme like this is the bam hi which has been discovered from restriction enzyme discovered from bacillus amyloliquefaciens name is given like b is taken the am is from the specific one I mean this is the first which we have been discovered then sma1 cerecia maricens so this these are the restriction enzyme which have been discovered from the bacteria and this is the point which is called as origin of replication and this part is the cause site or cohesive site so these are combined right so cause mate cause is cohesive end of phage particle lambda phage particle mate is from plasmid they they have been artificially constructed with the help of hohens and collins in 1978 uh, 10 kilobars to 45 kilobars in length they can be packaged into the lambda particles can be perpetuated inside the bacteria in the form of plasmid can be purified and stored at phages I mean after designing this cosmid vectors what what is actually done this is the cos site right cos in the cos site like this is the cos site in the cos site this part is cut and we can insert the foreign dna now this part is having now foreign dna and this is the cos site now this we can either pack inside the lambda phage particle or we can pack inside the bacteria so this will multiply as as the plasmids or we can also store them as phages so we can clone this G dna of interest or gene with the help of this cosmid vectors which have been artificially made called as cosmid vector now next example is of phasmid vectors so this is again a artificially constructed vector modified vector here part of the linear lambda genome in lambda phage 
DNA, uh, which is D linear, this has been taken. So this DNA should have the following functions uh, from the DNA of the lambda genomes. This, this should have a point for DNA replication. This also should have a point for lysis, lysing of the bacterial cell, like this is the bacterium and this is the viral particle which is infecting. So this will lyse the bacterial wall. So this should have the genes for lysing the bacterial wall. Then cohesive end of the uh, phage particle, like we have discussed what is the cohesive end. We have cut the DNA and this part and this part has the, this is the cohesive end of the DNA. So we should have this cause site and we should have the uh, DNA which has origin of replication and which causes lysis of the bacterial cell because when bacteria will die and these viral particles are released, this is also called as lysis of the bacterial cell. So lambda genome DNA which is not essential like we have taken this viral particle and inside it has DNA. Part of the DNA which is not essential that will be cut or removed. Now this part will be replaced with the uh, linearized plasmid with intact replication module. Now this phasmids they are packed inside the lambda particles then which are used to infect the Escherichia coli. Supposing we have this DNA and we have inserted this foreign DNA right. Now we can pack again this DNA into the lambda particles then they will go inside the bacterium again they will behave like plasmids and they will multiply and multiple copies will be produced. So in this way we can use phasmids at vector, we can use our DNA of interest and we can multiply it. Next example is of shuttle vectors. These are the vectors uh, now which can shuttle in between two different species. Now two different species can be either one prokaryote, another can also be prokaryote or one prokaryote and one eukaryotic cell. So what are prokaryote, one are, what are eukaryotic cells, a link has been shared in the description box, what are prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So shuttle vectors which can be constructed to replicate in Escherichia coli, E. coli, Escherichia coli as well as in the mammal cell, mammalian cell is mammal cell. So we can have region of replication of Escherichia coli and that of the mammalian cell. Supposing this is the vector which is being used in two cells in prokaryotic cell as well as in the eukaryotic cell. So this should have two ORI point. One ORI point for the one cell and second ORI point for the another cell. Supposing we are using this vector in the prokaryote and eukaryote. So this will have a prokaryotic origin of replication. This will have a eukaryotic origin of replication. So these are mostly used for cloning of recombinant genes in the prokaryotes. Now what, what is done? Like this is the prokaryotic DNA, we will in uh, supposing this is the prokaryotic DNA and we have inserted our gene of interest over here. Now this will be multiplied, so we will get many copies of the gene, many like we have already discussed how we get the cloned particles. So we will get many copies of this gene which is called as foreign DNA. Now this can be transferred now into the mammalian cell. This gene can be transferred into the mammalian cells that is in the eukaryotic cell because this will have two ORI point. One ORI point for the prokaryotes, one ORI, ORI point for the eukaryotes. So in eukaryotes, this recombined DNA, now this will be able to express, sh show its expression means like this is the DNA, this can form RNA, then this can form the protein, right? So this transcription, translation, formation of protein, this is called as expression. So in you, if we are successful in this practical or in this experiment, now in eukaryotic cell, which we have multiplied in the prokaryotic cell gene, if this is put it into the eukaryotic cell where it get integrates and show its expression, then we are successful. So these are called as shuttle vectors, which can be used in two species. One can be prokaryote, second can be eukaryote, or both can be prokaryote. Supposing we have multiplied the gene in one prokaryote and we want to insert that gene into another prokaryote, so we can use for uh, prokaryote and prokaryote or we can go for prokaryote and eukaryotes. Now next very important uh, cloning vector is yeast artificial chromosome. As the name indicate, yeast is a fungus which is a unicellular fungus. So from the yeast we will uh, extract its DNA and we will uh, make, a, uh, make an artificial chromosome. These are also called as yaks. So what is done? How we are making the artificial chromosome? We are taking the telomeric end. Now, if we see a chromosome, uh, supposing this is the chromosome. 
Now this part is called as telomeric end. And this part is called as centromere. This is centromere and this is the telomere. In normal chromosome we see these parts. Now what, what is being done? We are taking this yeast DNA making the telomeric ends. And this part is the centromeric. Like these are the telomeric ends. Right? And this part is the centromeric end. Uh, then addition to this we have a part of the plasmid which is called as PBR322. What is PBR322 plasmid? This is again an artificially constructed plasmid. And, uh, this have been discussed in the previous uh, video of the plasmid. Link is shared in the description box. So we will have a point which is called as origin of replication or we can say autonomously replication region or origin of replication. Then we have this CEN means centromeric region telomeric end and we have a marker gene. Marker gene is which helps to identify it from the transformed population. So this is gene for histidine biosynthesis called as selectable marker gene. Right. Sometimes we say well, what is your marker point. So we will say uh, my, my mole on the nose is my marker point. So similarly in the gene there is a marker point like here this marker point is histidine 3. Uh, histidine biosynthesis marker gene so we will be able to grow in presence of histidine this bacterium and we'll put and that uh, and the bacteria which will not be able to survive in presence of histidine they will die only those bacteria will survive which have the histidine 3 gene and we can uh, trans we can uh, we can select the transformed cell by this uh, putting the marker gene into the artificially constructed gene then it has trip 1 gene trip 1 gene is for the Synthesis of the tryptophan. Tryptophan it is an amino acid. Again, bacteria which have this gene, they will be able to synthesize tryptophan. Supposing we have not given in the media tryptophan, but it has a trip one gene, so this will be able to synthesize tryptophan one gene, and this will be able to survive. So this YAK DNA is artificially constructed then we can put our dna of interest supposing we are putting our dna of interest over here so when we are putting our dna of interest over here when yak will multiply this dna of interest will also multiply this yak has been used in human genome project so what is human genome project like uh, like we have 23 pairs of chromosome all of the chromosome have been sequenced I mean their sequence of genes is known on the chromosome so we can by knowing the sequence of gene we can uh, study the functions of the gene we can study various kind of diseases we can also go for gene therapy uh, this process is useful because we insert dna more than one mega base pair so quite uh, we can say giga base pair I mean it, quite big dna we can clone with the help of yak vectors so this is also used for human gene for cystic fibrosis uh, which is about 250 kilo bar bars in length this can be cloned which is quite big gene uh, cystic fibrosis is a inherited disease which can affect lungs and mucous membranes so this gene uh, which is responsible for this disease we can identify that gene we want to uh, cure that gene so this gene have been cloned with the help of yak vectors so another uh, another important factor is this can be used for mapping of complex eukaryotic chromosome if we see human chromosome they are quite complex how genes are located how they are functioning what is their uh, structure and localization and we can sequence mean a gene b gene c gene what are the genes present in the eukaryotic chromosome what is their mapping mean what is the distance between the gene again that can be done with the help of yak vectors so these are various cloning vectors we have discussed in detail and if you have any uh, questions you can ask me in the comment box if you, you have not understood anything you can ask me in the comment box thank you for watching my video if you like my video please like share and subscribe